Welcome to part two of our lesson on how to use a table of values to graph a linear equation in two variables. In part one we graphed the linear equation y equals three x minus two using a table of values as well as y equals two thirds x minus one using a table of values. For these two examples the equations were in what's called sloped intercept form and in example two, this example here, because we had a fraction times the input variable x, to avoid fractions for the y values, we selected x values or inputs that were multiples of the denominator. So that's important to remember. And for our last example, we want to graph the linear equation four x plus two y equals ten using a table of values. This equation is in what's called standard form, but our procedure is going to be the same. The first step is to select input values or x values and then find the corresponding output or corresponding y value. Let's go ahead and select x equals negative one, x equals zero, and x equals positive one. And I'll explain why we have an extra row here in just a moment. So for the next step, we substitute these values for x into our equation and determine the corresponding output or corresponding y value. So when x equals negative one, we would have four times negative one plus two y equals ten. Simplifying, we have negative four plus two y equals ten. Next step, isolate the variable term, so we add four to both sides. So we'd have two y equals ten plus four is fourteen. Divide both sides by two. Simplifying, we have y equals seven. So when the input is negative one, the output is seven, or when x is negative one, y equals seven. Before we grow the next x value though, we do want to make sure that the output value or y value would be on the vertical axis. Notice the vertical axis goes from negative seven to positive seven, so the y value does appear on the vertical axis. If the y value does not appear on the vertical axis, we want to go back and change the x value until it does. Because if the y value doesn't show on the vertical axis, when we go to plot the point, the point wouldn't be on the coordinate plane. Next we have an x value of zero, so performing substitution we'd have four times zero plus two y equals ten. And four times zero is zero, so we have two y equals ten. Dividing both sides by two, we have a y value or output of five. Next we have an x value of one, so we'll substitute one for x, so we have four times one plus two y equals ten, giving us four plus two y equals ten. Next step, we subtract four on both sides, so we'd have two y equals six, dividing both sides by two, we have y equals three. So the corresponding y value output is three. Now the reason I left this last row here is that our guidelines do tell us to always select values for x and find the corresponding y value or output value, but whenever we have an equation in standard form, this form here, there's nothing wrong with selecting a y value and finding the x value. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we select y equals zero and determine the value of x. So if y equals zero, notice how the equation is fairly straightforward. We'd have four x plus two times zero equals ten. What makes this easier is that two times zero is zero, so the result is just four x equals ten and dividing both sides by four we do get a fraction here, we get x equals ten fourths, which equals five halves, which is equal to two point five. So if the y value or output is zero, the input or x value would have to be two point five. So while the guidelines do say always select values for the input variable x, when an equation is in standard form, it can sometimes be helpful to select a y value of zero and determine the x value. Let's go ahead and write the ordered pairs. So here we have negative one comma seven. Here we have zero comma five. Here we have one comma three. And finally we have two point five comma zero. Let's go ahead and plot these points. So negative one comma seven would be from the origin left one up seven. And then we have the ordered pair zero comma five, which is the vertical intercept here on the vertical axis. Next we have one comma three, which would be here. So typically we find three points and then sketch our line, which we could do, but since we found the ordered pair two point five comma zero, let's also graph that point. 
And notice how this point would be the horizontal intercept, 2.5 comma zero is here. Now let's go ahead and graph our line. This will be the graph of our linear equation, 4x plus 2y equals 10, using a table of values. I hope you found this helpful.